Hi, everybody. Thanks for having us. I'm Stephanie Shaw. I'm a senior lecturer over in the theater department. And I was charged with finding election night victory speeches, which what I discovered was, first of all, there's no real historical precedent for them. The earliest one I could find, with the help of our excellent librarians here, was uh, Dwight Dwight D. Eisenhower. Um, yeah, so uh, before then, the guys just said, okay, thanks, and uh, went to work, I suppose. Uh, so what you're gonna hear here tonight uh, from my, my lovely performers is a compilation of uh, election night snippets, verbatim, every word you hear, you can document, and if you want to come up to me afterwards, I can tell you who said what. Um, but I think it's much more fun for you all to guess who said what. Um, and to help me out, I have Michael, Natalie, Jared, and Ted, and I'm going to arrange them, and we'll get started. Thank you. Come on up here, guys. So you're going to use this. Crowd around. Crowd around. You heard it's not very live, okay? Um, and Ted, whoosh it. That's it. They all want to look at you. Go for it. Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you all. You. Thank you. My fellow Americans, thank you for, for being here. the good evening, my fellow Americans. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't realize so many of you would still be up so late. I am indeed as humble as I am proud. I am more grateful than I can say. I am humbled by the trust and confidence of my fellow citizens. I am indeed as humble as I am proud of the decision that... Let me just say, first of all, this has been, well, there's never been a more humbling moment in my life, not only humbled by the extent of what has happened tonight. <laughs> that the American people have made. America has spoken. The American people have voted. The people have spoken. The decision that the American people have made. The people. The people. The people. I. 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 Earlier this evening, I spoke on the phone with President Carter. The president pledged the utmost. Just received a very gracious call from Senator McCain. He. Cooperation in the transition that will take place in these coming months. Fought long and hard in this campaign, and he's fought even longer for the country he loves. As I say, the president was most gracious about this. I had a good visit with Senator Dole. I applauded the campaign. I have received a very gracious message from the vice president and also had a telephone conversation and with him. And congratulated him him for his gallant and courageous fight. This evening, I received a gracious call. Earlier today, Senator Kerry called. From the Vice President, we agreed. Uh, with his congratulations, we had a really good phone call. We he was agreed to do our best to heal our country after this hard-fought... Very gracious. Senator Kerry waged a spirited campaign, and he and his supporters can be proud of their efforts. Contest! I just received a telephone call from Governor Dukakis, who was most <laughs> gracious. His call was personal. It was genuinely friendly, and it was in the great tradition of American politics. I have received the following wire from Vice President Nixon. In the wire, he says, I want to repeat through this wire the congratulations and best wishes I extended to you on television last night. I know that you will have support, united support. Americans, as you lead the nation in the cause of peace and freedom during the next four years. A campaign is a disagreement, and disagreements divide. But an election is a decision, and decisions clear the way for harmony and peace. And now I know we'll come together as we always have. We must put politics behind us and work together to make the promise of America available for every one of our citizens. I know America wants reconciliation and unity. I know Americans want progress, and we must seize this moment and deliver. Together, guided by a spirit of common sense, common courtesy, and common goals, we can unite and inspire the American citizens. We have worked hard to end the politics of who's to blame, and instead to ask, 
What are we going to do to make America better? Let us resist the temptation to fall back on the same partisanship and pettiness and immaturity that has poisoned our politics for so long. And our nation must rise above a house divided. I think it's time to tap the tremendous strength and vitality and idealism <laughs> and hope and patriotism and a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood in this country to unify this nation to make it great once more. Now I saw many signs in this campaign. Some of them were not friendly. Some were very friendly. But the one that touched me the most was the one I saw in Deschler, Ohio at the end of a long day of whistle stopping. It was almost impossible to see, but a teenager, teenager held up a sign, bring us together. And that will be the great objective of this administration at the outset, to bring the American people together. And perhaps the most important thing of all, to bring our people together as never before so that diversity can be a source of strength in a world that is ever smaller, where everyone counts and everyone is a part of America's family. It is time to put country ahead of party. You know, Abe Lincoln said. Abraham Lincoln. Thomas Jefferson. Abraham Lincoln. Jefferson. I had a conversation today with Mrs. Eisenhower. <laughs> <laughs> she, of course, was pleased with the result, and she says the general is elated. I recognize clearly the weight of the responsibilities that you have placed upon me, and I assure you that I will never in my service in Washington give short weight to those responsibilities. To all Americans, I say the next four years are going to be difficult and challenging years for all of us. I think that there, in, I think that there is general agreement by all of our citizens that a supreme national effort will be needed in the years above to move this country safely through the 1960s. I would only hope that in these next four years, we can so conduct ourselves in this country and so meet our responsibilities in the world in building peace in the world that years from now, people will look back to the generation of the 1970s at how we conducted ourselves and they will say, God bless America. It is a clarion call to face the challenges of the end of the Cold War and the beginning of the next century. It's not going to be easy for any of us. I don't claim to know all the answers, but I'm not afraid to take on the responsibilities of President of the United States because my strength and my courage and my advice and my counsel and my criticism comes from you. And if I can tap the greatness that is in you and in the American people, we can make our nation's government a great and a source of pride once again. I am not frightened by what lies ahead. And I don't believe the American people are frightened by what lies ahead. Together, we're going to do what has to be done. We're going to put America back to work again. In four historic years, I'm proud to lead such an amazing country, and I'm proud to lead it forward. I can assure you that every degree of mind and spirit that I possess will be devoted to the long-range interests of the United States and the cause of freedom around the world. Now, I'd like to thank my family, <laughs> my wife, without whom I would not be here tonight, and who... The fact is, I'd be nothing without them. Our four sons, our daughter, and my own Barbara Bush. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't... I believe will be one of the greatest first ladies in, in the history of the Republic. Say she's my own anymore, for soon she'll be the first lady of all the United States. <laughs> Laura's the love... My best friend for the last 16 years, the rock of my life and the love of my life of my life our generation's next first lady well and speaking of nancy she's gonna have a new title in a couple of months michelle obama and well it isn't really a new title because she's been the first lady in my life for i want to thank time. my wife my wife who and our daughters for their love has endured more speeches than ever in the press, than members of the press, and you know how tired you get of them. Laura's, activ Laura's act 
active involvement as First Lady of Texas has made Texas a better place, and she will be a, a wonderful First Lady of America. It takes a real trooper to hear the same speech over and over again for 21 years and act as if it's the first time each time. <laughs> so now my wife and I prepare for a new administration and for a new baby. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Thanks you. God bless. Very much. Thank you and may bless the United States of America. Thank you. Good night and God bless. I thank God for the faith he's given me. America. And remember, a great philosophy is never one without defeat. It is always one without fear. What is important is that a man. Thank you and God. God. Bless. Or a woman. Engage in the battle. Enter the arena. God bless. Participate. America. America.